Okay, hey guys, and welcome to another really exciting week at the Underwater Realm video blog. Now, this is week 29, and we're going to be sharing with you a little top-secret indie filmmaking DIY project we've been working on for a week now. This is in the run-up to our underwater test shoot. Uh, now, this isn't the dry-for-wet test shoot we did in Shepparton a couple of weeks back. This is, uh, this is a new test shoot, and this is designed to kind of mimic a, a shoot underwater in the ocean with divers, lights, cameras boats, just to make sure any problems we're going to come up against we can counteract, iron out and deal with before we ever have to get in the water on a full scale production. So what we're trying to do is this week we're manufacturing a Kina Flow. Now Kina Flow is a type of light that we use in the industry a lot. It's uh, basically a set of fluorescent tubes and they can come in all sorts of different configurations but it produces a really really wonderful light. Um, but they are very expensive and they do come with their own inherent problems. So what we're trying to do is make an underwater realm version of this light that is more appropriate for our use. Kina flows are really, really wonderful. Um, they, they get rid of flicker that is inherent in fluorescent lighting. They get rid of the horrible color cast that you might recognize from traditional fluorescent lighting like you might get in schools, hospitals, kitchens. And they produce a really, really beautiful light without any flicker at any shutter speed. So it's a tall order to try and create something that's even of the same quality. But we're going one step further. We're looking to manufacture something that is as good as a Kina flow in terms of brightness and in terms of quality of light. But what we're doing on top of that is we're making this thing more energy efficient. We're making it run off batteries so that we can use it in more remote locations. And we're also making this thing less fragile and completely submersible. Being the underwater realm, we want to be able to use these things underwater, both in the ocean and in tanks. And so we're trying to manufacture basically a Kina float or an underwater Kina flow. And uh, so we've begun a week of really, really intensive research and development. Now, traditional fluorescent lights, they have to go through a couple of things that you might recognize from the home. They have to go through a little starter. They also have to go through a ballast. Now, you might not recognize this beast. This is generally hiding inside a fluorescent light mount, and it's what creates that horrible buzzing sound. And it also, cheap ballasts give off a, a nasty flicker. So you can only film at certain frame rates before you start to get a horrible kind of wobbling flickering effect. We don't want any of that. So uh, our research that started with our fluorescent tubing, the same as Kinoflow uses, or very similar to what Kinoflow uses, presents a number of unique problems. Fluorescent tubes inherently are glass, and so they're very fragile. They're also filled with some quite nasty gases, so you don't want to break them. Uh, you can get polycarbonate housings to go on the outside of these to toughen them up, but it's an added expense, and it does lead, well, you've still essentially got a load of nasty gas and a load of glass inside. So if you do smash them, you've contained the problem, but the glass has still broken. You can't use the light anymore. The other problem with these things is because they emit light in 360 degrees, a lot of the time you actually want it all to go in one direction. You're generally pointing a light at something, and you want it to be lit. You don't want all the light coming back behind camera. So what you do then is you take a highly reflective piece of material like this, you clip it onto your light, and all that light is kind of caught and bounced back. But that's that's one way to solve the problem, and uh, what we're going to try and do is counteract that problem, because this is kind of a faff. What we've now got is a piece of metal clipped to a piece of glass, which we're going to try and wave around underwater. The other thing is that these, of course, require mains electricity, which you don't generally want to mix with water. It's considered to be a fairly unwise thing to do. So our research led us to new developments in the world of LED lighting. Now, LEDs you get a whole range of them and uh, obviously some are bright, some are dim, you get all sorts of different qualities but we have after numerous attempts and numerous uh, bits of research have managed to track down a provider that can import from China and will manufacture LEDs that are as bright as fluorescent tubes but using half the amount of energy. So what we've done is we've, we've sourced these. These are PCBs, printed circuit boards, with 300 tiny little LEDs on them. They also, sadly, are they're designed as replacements for the, uh, the T8 fluorescent tubes, so they are running off mains power, but uh, they are, as I say, just as bright, and of course, give you when you mount 300 of them on a board like this, you get a really nice soft light source, almost indistinguishable from the sort you'd get from a fluorescent bulb. The advantage, of course, is that there are no LEDs on the back, so all the light is going in one direction. You don't have to faff around with using reflectors. So we take this circuit board, um, and again, after a few days of, of development, we managed to strip out all the unnecessary components in this configuration, and we managed to get these things running off a quite a high voltage direct current. So rather than an alternating current like you'd use from mains electricity, it's a direct current, the sort you'd get from a battery, which means that our battery power plan is now much, much easier to achieve, because rather than having to go from a bank of batteries through an inverter to create a kind of false mains power through a trip regulator, a current regulator, 
into the lights to provide them with illumination. Uh, we've actually managed to go directly from battery to LED um, without any steps in between, which is really, really beneficial because it makes it much more efficient. It means there's much less to go wrong. So we've now built a bank of batteries, very similar to this heavy little sod, um, 12 volts, and it weighs uh, a few kilos there, and uh, just gives you a 12 volt terminal, basically like a miniature car battery. Um, now we've bought a bank of these, and we've mounted them inside a Peli case, which again is waterproof, and uh, that's then rigged up in series to provide us with exactly the voltage we've discovered we need to get the most efficient lighting. Not necessarily the brightest, but the most efficient lighting out of these LED tubes. What we've done is then mounted those LEDs on a piece of aluminium backing to work as a heat sink. We've put a frosted covering over the top of them to make that light even more soft and even. And we've then sourced a load of PVC tubing or PVC pipe, which is very, very flexible. Um, but we've got 30 meters of this in one length. And by cutting out the right size lengths and ramming our LED light tubes inside them and then sealing the ends, we've created these batons. Now these batons are almost exactly the same size as a Kino tube. Um, these are capped on the end with a rigid plastic which is sealed on We're using a PVC weld. Um, obviously PVC tubing. On one side you can see here we've got the aluminium extrusion which works as a heat sink and also provides strength into the system and on the other side we have a frosted white. Um, and then we've got wires trailing out the end here. I'll show you what they look like illuminated now. Um, but these things, very, very bright, uh, very strong and completely solid state. So we can drop these and don't have to worry about it. Very, very powerful lights, solid state, there's nothing to go wrong in there, and they use half as much power as a fluorescent solution. Of course, we need to mount these things, so what we've done is gone down to B&Q. We've picked up a load of aluminium extrusion, which is just very, very lightweight bars of aluminium. We've drilled holes in them, and we've riveted them together into this framework. This framework has then been hammerited using uh, black hammerite uh, paint, which is a very, very good protector. And we've then mounted all these clips, which are actually furniture clips on the end. You can see here they've got little uh, hooks and clasps. Uh, what we can do then is, uh, if you'll excuse me one moment while I retrieve that rather foolishly discarded light. We can then take this uh, light pattern and with a quick push, mount it onto our framework. So what we have here is the first part of an eight bank lighting solution that's gonna run off batteries. We've actually manufactured two of these, so we're gonna have 16 lights in total, and our single pack of batteries is gonna run this entire system for almost four hours. Now we've got two of these battery systems that can be on charge simultaneously. So there you have a, almost a full shooting day, switching the lights off when you need to. Now switches on each individual bulb. And uh, there you have it, the first parts of our lighting system. Now there's still a long way to go. Um, obviously we've got to manufacture all the wiring and make sure that that's all completely waterproof and submersible, which are two different things. Um, we've got to do tests with color temperatures, making sure that we're 100% spot on, getting it at 5500 Kelvin to make sure that it's ideal for digital still and video. Um, and we've got a little bit more research to do in the, uh, the battery department as well, and full testing. But follow us over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be showing you how this system develops. We'll show you what it looks like lit up, and we'll show you how far we get towards our underwater lighting test and how these things work underwater. Now, obviously, just because it's underwater, or waterproof, submersible, doesn't mean that it has to be used underwater. The intention is that we're going to be using these things in remote locations as well. We've got a cliff top scene. We don't want to have to get a generator anywhere near up to the top of that cliff because it's actually on a small island. Um, so what we're doing is just carting batteries up to the top and using this in place of, of more traditional lights. So it should be a really, really wonderful system. We're really excited to see how it works out. Um, and it's a proper DIY project. We're going to uh, perhaps give full instructions or at least a, a kit list on the website so you'll be able to follow along and see how to avoid the mistakes that we've made and how to make a, a nice cheap lighting system that will mimic the, the most expensive sets that you can buy elsewhere so really really exciting and uh, keep watching over the next couple of weeks to see how this develops and we will see you next week at the underwaterrealm.com